Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Sayyidi, magic is everywhere. How do we explain to young children who ask about it? I tried to How do we what? Uh, how do we tell our children about magic? I tried explaining it to them but it didn't come out right. <coughs> magic and how do you explain to children that magic exists everywhere and most of what they see and on fantasy shows and it's it's uh, has a, a element of real. So as long as they know these things are real and that most are very dangerous and that uh, you know spiritually practice and meditate and do all these spiritual practices so that you can reach the heavenly reality of power and not the sort of the, the, the dunya version of when you don't get the heavenly power then they make up for it through material world and through bad actions to get a power and that's what they call magic. But there are blessings in the way of the heavens and the blessings and realities and God's might and majesty, that's not magic, that's just God's might and majesty. Magic is when they don't have that and they manipulate the earthly energy and to bring about something that God didn't want or, or didn't authorize for that. But they can't do what God doesn't want but didn't authorize for that event or that purpose and they do it regardless of what God authorized or not and He allows it to occur but at the same time they'll be punished for that, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Is there a difference between spirit and soul? No, I think a lot of these uh, terms and expressions people are confused through different readings. But let's just stick with the soul and ego, these are two easier words to understand. The light and energy of the soul and the ego, inshaAllah. Uh, as Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa how does the connection with the shaykh work if you are living in a different country and how is tarbiyah carried out or received in this circumstance? Yeah, nowadays it's better for you to be living in a faraway country and watching via internet. We said before the inhabitants of Hajj, they don't, the inhabitants of Mecca, they don't make Hajj. Because they say, oh I live there, don't worry about it. So the barakah is in being far away from the shaykh. That way with your zeal and yearning you begin to really try to meditate, to make your connection. The shaykh doesn't need your, your proximity, he's communicating beyond the heavens and into paradise oceans. His communication is not from the level of dunya. The reason he's a shaykh is he's reaching into the heart of Prophet is sending into his heart and the connection through only Allah and Sahabi and Ahlul Bayt or all in the world of light. So their connection is beyond understanding. So earthly connection is very… is insignificant beyond the, the seven heavens they're able to connect. So your proximity is, is not necessary, it actually creates a, a yearning within your heart to understand, to read, to, to, to connect, to make the connection and the connection can become much more powerful because of your distance away then the shaykhs will begin to connect with the person and begin to inspire within their heart and the zeal in which they have to support. They support, they start to spread the, the links, they, they do everything and that's the, the barakah of tariqah that the ones whom supporting and doing projects and, and doing links, they look the ones in Pakistan they haven't even seen us and they don't need to see us because they may be meditating and, and see the awliya all the time and every barakah and every actions that they're doing are being dressed upon them, blessed upon them and I'm sure they're feeling all those dressings and blessings. So tariqah doesn't need any proximity, wherever people are they just need to have a will where there's a will there's a way that Allah will open and Allah will begin to send immense energies. In these days of difficulty the energy and the connections are immensely powerful. Just listen to the questions, 
The questions are important for our people to hear because they're thinking, geez these people far away are experiencing all these things and that's exactly it. That's what's important with these questions that people are experiencing all these things. Look at the, the quality of the questions that they're asking, the experiences, the lights, the, the things that are happening. So that's alhamdulillah is a good sign and Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam is reaching everyone. So these are the times of the Mahdiyoon and the Imam Mahdi Salaam's light is reaching everyone. Anyone speaking has to speak with his permission and his sword is right above them to protect them and to guard them, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Beloved Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa What are some things that can take away or reduce barakah and iman? That take away barakah and iman? All that are, are known to us through the teachings backbiting and bad character. That your, your amal can be depleted, the most dangerous way of depletion is through backbiting. That as soon as we, we inspired by devils and bad energy to backbite people, they empty out the account of that person. So shaitan knows, he sees, oh look this person like a balloon filled with blessings, I'm just gonna pop it in a second. And it goes to them and inspires them. They start saying bad things. Imagine if they go around talking bad about their shaykh or a shaykh or one day they say, you're the shaykh and the next day they say, no you're not the shaykh and they start talking bad about them. It's just shaitan pop their, their balloon. Are you any better for having said bad things about a shaykh? No, but you're actually empty. So they inspire the person to lose the air that they have, lose the blessings that they have and begin to deflate them, deflate them, deflate them. And then when the barakah is gone then there's nothing left then shaitan can begin to inspire them towards bad actions in which they begin to lose their faith and, and feel the great disconnect with their connection and that becomes the, the danger. That's why we started off with this waswas that Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq is asking from us that have a Siddiqiyah character, let me too dress your face, love me you'll be with me. Let me to dress your face but I'll tell you for myself that my love for Prophet I never listened to shaitan. These, these holy companions they didn't like listen at night and think what shaitan is telling them, then go think about it and then by morning time come out and debate with Prophet No, they knew exactly that it, when this shaitan is talking is like defecating they're gonna block it out and their whole love was for that reality of Prophet So we begin to teach, if you want the love of Prophet within your heart emanating and sending that light and that sunshine into your eyes and into your ears so that you can have these spiritual experiences, uh, stop listening to shaitan. The two of them they don't meet in the same area. Either you're going to give yourself to Satan and negative energies or you're going to give yourself to the Divine. InshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Ya Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam How can we imagine the shaykh from heart and not by the mind? I couldn't understand from the article when I was trying to imagine. The shaykh, the fa face comes in mind so… Yeah heart and mind is that if you sit and meditate <coughs> with your head up and now close your eyes and say, I see the shaykh right in front of me and I'm looking through my eyes. So when I look through my eyes and I'm looking to see the shaykh right in front of me, that's your mind because your eyes are connected to here, here. This is not connected to here, did you know that? Right? This is, this is a piece of meat and its wires go into here. This piece of meat its wires don't go into here. So this, this circuit here like a computer is wired to here and this looks out and blue, red, maybe blue in my life meant something very horrific and scary, red meant something very fiery and evil. 
it's all conditioned what the eye has been trained all its life to see and been told by the brain and the two of them work together. You're not going to find God like that, you're not going to find anything through here. So when we say mind it's what the mind controls is your eyes. So now you tilt your head down and through your heart say that I… my love for my shaykh is right in front of me. He's right there in front of me and I don't see him clearly because I'm not somebody that deserves to see him clearly. So I'm trying to humble myself that I'm nothing, I'm no one but I know that with my heart and my faith that my shaykh is right there present in front of me. And I'm asking that from your light send into my light and that's why it's important to bend your head to make your connection. I don't know other people's practices is keep your back straight, keep your head straight because it's all nafsani and, and illusion and, and delusion. But you're breaking from your mind and through your heart, your heart will begin to cast an image. So like casting you don't have to have Netflix on the TV but you can cast it from your device. So the strongest casting device you have is your heart because it's with Allah, Qalbil Mu'min Baytullah, it's from the Divine, it's the house of where your soul is. So with your heart you cast the image of the shaykh, with your heart you cast the image of Medina, the Medina is in front of me I look at the picture so Ya Rabbi please let my soul to always be there and through my heart I cast the image of Medina. And I just sit there and then my heart and my faith become stronger until daily the image becomes stronger and stronger. Then I ask from this Rosa Sharif in Medina to Munawwara that Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem let me just to always be at your feet and from the tajalli of your holy presence send light into my heart, always head down and in. And what we described last night that put your head down and go in. So it means that this, this way of reality is not through the mind but through the heart and the heart is faith and iman. The more you practice it, the more you practice it with humility that who are you to say, I want to see something clearly, what do you think this is like a game and, and kindergarten? So you talk to yourself in that way. Not that you deserve to see something, well, who's anybody to see anything? What did you do so great that Allah is going to let you see something? So you talk to yourself in humility, I'm nobody, I'm nobody. I'm just know with my faith Ya Rabbi that they're there and they're present. I'm, I, I know with my faith I'm at the Kaaba and that the Kaaba is in front of me Ya Rabbi from that light please dress my heart. Take a path of humility. And every dialogue that you have with Allah with Prophet is through humility and through that humility Allah will raise. But if you start high Allah, Allah can only bring you down, He doesn't give to people to make them more arrogant. So when you start low your only way is up, right? So in old days they would pray crawling. So they don't need Allah to punch them down and, and smash them. So you just down, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Until Allah want to send a goodness into the heart where the servant feels that happiness and that ecstasy, alhamdulillah. And still again, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Ya Rabbi Shukr, thank you, I'm nothing. I don't deserve it. I know what have I done in my life and thank you for forgiving me and dressing me from these lights and continuous state of humility to be nothing, to be nothing, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear Sayyid. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Forgive my bad adam and ignorance, is there a connection between parallel universes and seven levels of nafs and seven name realities? Same name, name seven, 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 seven. There's, there's something in everything. 
But more important is what are you trying to accomplish? You know, we're not throwing out questions just to you know see if you can confuse me. The questions that are needed are, what am I doing and how am I going to use it? So I want to know my seven levels of my nafs and the reality of Surah Fatiha because it's describing my ascension. So the last verse of Surah Fatiha is nafs amara because they angered Allah and they definitely went astray, that's amar. So that is in correlation to my meditation and, and an ascension. But you know just trying to figure out all these different things and do they all go together? But yeah that's how are we going to use it is what's important. So based on practices and what people are trying to do and what they're trying to achieve those are important to figure otherwise just you know facts that confuse people more and, and uh, those, those things just make people more and more confused on how to use that information, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa What happens if we take a break? If you take a break, well it's like a shuttle, like a bullet shuttle that is moving at a speed that cannot be imagined and you're asking to get off and when you get off it's kept going because it doesn't slow down for anyone. And so what happens is that people feel very disconnected. And that's all the shaitan wants, right? Because you're on a power line, you're going very high. If you say, I'm just going to stop here for a while, one, you begin to feel there's no more connection and you have a likelihood of a very long fall because they took you up very high. So it's not very easy just to disconnect and go walk around. The fall can be very significant in which a lot of difficulty comes upon that servant because they, they ascended very high with the shaykhs. And then the person whom does disconnect, they feel a great disconnect and a more difficulty to come back because now their nafs is saying, oh you're, you don't understand any of this stuff anymore, you left that stuff, now you have to start all the way from beginning. So it become very difficult on the nafs. Not that the door of the shaykhs close because they, they're not out supervising who's logging on and who's logging off. That's why the expression was, come, come, you know, a thousand times, even you broke your oath a thousand times, come, come, come again. But in these days of, of significant difficulties and sicknesses and hardships, these are probably not the best days to take a break because that may be the time in which immense difficulties come, you feel a great disconnect and then shaitan make it so difficult to come back, it's like trying to connect in the middle of a tornado. Once you let go of that rope and it starts to blow you around all over the, the jungle, it's very difficult to get and climb your way back and then to hold back on and to, to reignite yourself. So it's just a recommendation, we have no way of sort of you know watching people online who left and who came. So that's only in the person's heart if they want to do that or don't want to do that, inshaAllah. Uh, as Sayyidi. Can we take the leather uh, leather wrapped taweez in the washroom or graveyard for protection? That taweez is, is for everything. You take it everywhere that you have to go because shaitan is everywhere, shaitan is definitely in the bathrooms so definitely has to be worn in, in the facilities and anywhere that is of a, of a dangerous nature or good nature everywhere, it's just not waterproof yet. So we're working on a design to, to get it waterproofed and encapsulated with you know those, those that, that, that special mold molding that you can mold it into something waterproof. But because it's not waterproof you can't go in the shower. But when a waterproof version is, is made then yes everywhere, there's no place that you don't put the taweez. It's on you all the time inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How can we stop ourselves from backbiting if we sit in gatherings with friends? It is so common, kindly make light on this topic. Yeah, for every spiritual practice, we need an external reminder. So, we have like the, the bands that we had from, from Sufi meditation 
We have something on ourself that we write a band that I'm not going to backbite. And that every now and then you go somewhere and just, you know, slap it onto your hand, ding as a reminder that I was practicing not to, to backbite. If you have to go to a certain place and you put like a lollipop, you put that in your my, mouth in, in the, instead of a rock because rock is dangerous for people who are not experienced. And with that lollipop is a reminder that you weren't going to talk there. You know, you try to, to find an association which are, are not backbiting and that's why we described the night before is try to find, you know, people who are trying to improve themselves. So if I go out and hang out with a bunch of gangsters and at the end I'm surprised why I'm, I'm still feeling like a gangster, well, because my friends are all gangsters you have to leave that. So it's a hijra. One day you have to decide, I'm going to leave badness and move towards goodness. And then I'm going to look around me and say, what, what in my life is not improving and what is, is not helping me to improve and then I want to move and have a hijra away from that. I want to accompany people who, who are good and want to improve themselves. Not people who are going to bring, you know, the, the, the azab and the anger of Allah upon my head. Because you sit with those people and they start to curse somebody that's holy to Allah or or something that's holy and then before you know it you're in a room filled with, you know, uh, azab because all this anger coming down at that time. So we try to always in our life keep the association of people whom are trying to improve themselves. And two, when you go with those type of people they're going to pull all your energy. So every goodness that you have done the, they're pulling energy, they're going to pull it from the one whom is most charged and begin to push out that energy. So again it's an association of where we choose to go and, and try to improve ourselves. Those are friends. If it's family then you know stay quiet, eat your family dinner and go home. But if it's friends then you are, you are voluntarily choosing these people then you know you, you pay the consequences of who we choose to be with. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, during daily awrad, body shakes by its own. It's sometimes fast and strong. What is the reality of this shaking? Please forgive me for my ignorance. <coughs> Just the energy, inshaAllah. Yeah, that make sure that you're, you're shaking by yourself, not in front of people, because you'll scare people. <laughs> yeah. So any, anytime you do a zikr, do a practice inshaAllah you do it with sincerity there's going to be energy, there's going to be a conflict in energy that uh, we talked last night about vibration that people are resonating at, at one type of energy. If they make their madad correctly and begin to do the zikr the, the energies of the madad are going to be much stronger and the vibrations are much much stronger as a result that begin to shake the vibration of the individual. So you just continue to do your zikr, make sure nobody is witnessing, nobody is watching and that this is not something of a public nature and then Allah doesn't like the public display of these spiritual things. This is a, a secret path, a, a private path in which we don't do what we do to be recognized by, by people, oh look what's happening to that person because then the nafs takes it and Allah walks away from it, means He push away from that servant that it's becoming nafsani and not ruhani. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How can one monitor the frequency in which one resonates? Try to do your meditation and do your muraqabah. That's your, your, you're not trying to monitor your resonance, you just want to know how come you're not able to connect with the shaykh because his resonance is of a different frequency. So that's what will attune. So the tuning fork itself doesn't have to know what's the tune that it's vibrating at because its tune wasn't important. But when the shaykh goes and puts it next to you, you have to wonder why I'm not resonating at his frequency. It'll all be resolved by them through your meditation. So when you sit and breathe and meditate, I'm nothing, I'm nothing and then you visualize their presence and dress me and you begin your zikr and your breathing, their energy's coming. 
and you, you're, you're beginning to resonate with your heart with them and you feel their presence and when they talk you feel their talk. I tell you before their emotions go up and down and your emotions go up and down because you're resonating with them. So you don't need to know what your frequency is on two or three or four, you just need to know that when he comes at 92 you're meditating and your frequency is being moved up to 92 which is a Muhammadan reality. Muhammadan frequency is now coming into that person and vibrating within them and begin to shatter the falsehood and exemplify the prophetic light and, and frequencies inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa What is the reality of owls? Are they related to evil practices? Owls, uh, I, I think you're talking about the, the, the demon Malik who sacrifices and, and thrives on the sacrificing and, and satanic rituals. So they use that symbol in their symbolisms because they want to say that they're ever wi they're wise and ever vigilant because the owl was a symbol of wisdom and it's always looking. So it perches itself up high, it doesn't move and it vigilantly like a nazar watches everything. So every haqqaiq shaitan has his imitated understanding. So he teaches his people, no we're like the owl. So we have the wisdom, we're illuminated da -na -na -na. <laughs> and as a result we are ever vigilant. So they use it on all their business logos and it goes hoo, hoo. <laughs> right? Because he has a fake who and we have the real who. So he's, he's, he's quite comical how he imitates everything from the heavens. Yeah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the reality of the nation of Turkey and its place in the end of days? <laughs> nation of Turkey. Yeah, I think we have a talk on that already, so alhamdulillah. Yeah, it's very important. There's somebody else talking very bad things and that person doesn't know anything. That the amanat of Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi it resides within Turkey and that the, the, the Khalifa of Islam it never left from Sayyidina Muhammad and he took it from the Arabs because of their disrespect and their not being respectful to the trust and to the representation of Sayyidina Muhammad and was given to the Ottoman nation and has never left. They never disrespected it and to today they love and respect the way and the example of Sayyidina Muhammad and as a result the Khalifa then became hidden amongst awliya and Shaykh Nazim was the holder of that reality and held the Ottoman nation and its Khalifa, its trust and the trust of Islam. So that, that never left, it was never given back to any other nation. So they represent the Khalifa and that they represent the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam and that their nation will be the first to rise to whatever call Sayyidina Mahdi Salam has their takbirat and their reversal of all their museums back into jami, the, the great mosques is a, is a sign of the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi That jami masjid so, was it Sophia, Sophia that we want the main one, it's huge, every fajr is hugely packed. You know that was a sign, you know those were the takbirs for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi and they came against his currency, came against his wealth and Allah sent billions of dollars in gold under the maqam of Erdogan which is again the Ottoman Empire. The forming of the Ottoman Empire is where they were reserved gold treasures under the earth for them. That when Allah wants them to have the jinn will raise all the treasures that are hidden on the earth for them to take and to, to do with the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi so very important nation, very important place for ziyarat and, and to go and, and to be dressed by the ziyarats and dressed by the maqams, dressed by the, the amanat of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam, the sword of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam, all these trusts are in Topkapi Museum. 
and they have no time. Means that the presence of Sayyidina Mahisham is present, the Sayyid, Sayyidina Isa sword to kill the Dajjal. Just witnessing the sword has the energy of killing Dajjal. There's no time. So he's actually holding it, he's actually killing Dajjal with it. So means the tajalli of that reality is upon that sword. Anyone who witnesses that sword and to be dressed by that sword is a protection against the Dajjal's arrival. So means these trusts and these amanats are not something that can anybody imagine. But that the, these are the signs that they regain their status, their obuhat, their, their magnificence as the Muhammadan kingdom on earth inshaAllah. As dear Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah What is the reality behind the legalization of cannabis in the West and its rapid spread among all age groups with versions of it as oils, chocolates, edibles and smoke? I think we talked last night that it's a, it's a whole package when you see the fire of Dajjal being presented that his, his operation is on fear because the heavenly kingdom is on faith. So the opposite of faith is fear, his kingdom operates on fear. So everything is a fire, everything is a fear and every remedy he gives for your fear is your jahannam. <coughs> what we talked about the hadith of Dajjal from Prophet he's going to present to you a fire, know that it's paradise. And he's going to present to you a paradise, something good, know it's hell. So when he operates based on the fire and making people to fear, anything he offers as a remedy which is the water and the goodness that he's offering, know that it's from Jahannam. <coughs> So then it's not a, a coincidence that he offers these things for people to relax and, and claim that they're not going to have pain, they can relax, they can do this, they can do that and as a result they become sickened by that. And there's so many different chemicals in those uh, things that they're giving out that it's going to cause massive amounts of schizophrenia. And already the insurance companies are taking that off of their insurance claims. They say, oh that we don't cover schizophrenia anymore. Why? Because they know this, these things are coming out for free and they're all laced and dosed with something that's going to cause massive amounts of schizophrenia where their neurotransmitters no longer connect and as a result these people are greatly disconnected within their head. And that was the… was it birdcage or bird box? Bird box. Bird box. Bird cage was that weird movie. Bird box is the good, the energy one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was bird box where the that sort of negative energy brought out the the horrible energy within people that made them go completely psycho. That's you know that's what they're trying to open up upon people. That uh, just a massive amount of chaos and and uh, uncontrol. Shama. Alhamdulillah, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yaseefoon, Salaamun Al Mursaleen, Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Bi Hurmat Muhammad Al Mustafa, Bi Siri Surat Al Fatiha.